got a great hearty dish for you now. Italian style lamb shanks. We're going to serve it with a little gremolata, which is basically a parsley, lemon and garlic seasoning. So we've got some lovely lamb shanks. We're going to flour these. Now, flouring helps thicken the sauce up a bit later on and also gives the lamb shanks a lovely crust onto them. So just roll them in the flour. Don't need too much flour, just enough to coat and absorb that excess moisture. Nice hot pan, good amount of oil, a couple of tablespoons worth. And we want to try and get a nice golden brown colour over these lamb shanks. Okay, so while our lamb shanks are browning, we're going to get on with the braised ingredient. We've got a couple of onions here. We're going to get these nicely diced. It doesn't have to be too fine. The Italian's food is always a little bit rustic to me. So, a large dice. Now we've got our garlic. Look at that. Once again, this doesn't have to be too fine because we are going to cook it nice and slow, so it's all going to break down. Now our lamb is pretty well browned here. So I'm going to get these into our braising dish now. Using these onions here just to pick up any of that little bits of brown flour at the bottom. It'll just stop them from burning at this point. The onions will naturally release a little bit of moisture into that pan. And it'll just make it really easy to lift all that caramelized stuff off at this stage. So our garlic's in, we're gonna cook that for a couple more minutes just to get the rawness out of the garlic. And in the meantime, we're going to get onto our gremolata, which is lemon, garlic, and parsley. So I'm going to show you a new method with the lemon now. It's to peel the lemon instead of using a microplane. Using a peeler, we leave all the pith behind and we just get the zest. Now the zest is what we're looking for here. It's got all the nice flavors. In, in the pith is where all the bitter flavors are. And we can line them up nicely. Basically, do a, uh, what the French call a julienne. So we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves by doing the gremolata now, because the lamb shanks are going to have to cook for two to three hours. But I like to be organised. And we can just keep it in a bowl, cover it in the fridge, and it'll stay nice and fresh for that time. That's one of the lovely sounds. I love hearing that, that sound. Just gonna get all that flavour off the bottom of the pan. We'll let that come up to the boil just to cook off some of that alcohol. And then we'll get our stock and our tomato into it. In the meantime, we'll get back onto the gremolata. Now we've got our garlic. Now we need to chop this really quite fine. Now I don't wanna, I'm not gonna turn this into a paste. I'm gonna keep a little bit of texture to it just so that we can put it over the top of our lamb shanks after. So I think that's fine enough. So our white wine's cooked down a little bit, all the alcohol's been cooked out. In goes our chicken stock. And our tomato. We're gonna bring this up to a boil, tip it onto our lamb, pop some rosemary in there, and our lamb's gonna go straight into the oven. Now we're gonna finish off our gremolata with some finely chopped parsley. Once again, it doesn't have to be too fine. Straight into the bowl. So our stock's almost up to the boil there. We're gonna put our rosemary over our lamb, just whole, we can, we're gonna pull this out after. Lamb and rosemary is a pretty fantastic flavor. Now our stock, tip that over your lamb. Now you want this to cover the lamb, so make, if it's not covering it, add a little bit more stock. So our lamb shanks have been in the oven for about three hours. It'll take two to three hours, depending on how big they are. The larger they are, obviously, the longer it'll take to cook. So these ones, super tender now. 
and super delicious. That sauce looks really nice, lush, rich. We're gonna get these out. Be gentle, because the meat is very tender at the moment. It is gonna fall off the bone. The smells that are coming off this are amazing. And don't feel you need to use your hands here. My hands are pretty, uh, pretty bulletproof at the moment. I've been touching hot things for a long time. Have the rosemary stalks in there, so take them out. And then we're gonna use as much of this sauce as we can get on there without making too much of a mess. Now we're serving this with some soft polenta, some broccolini and beans. You can't forget the gremolata. This just turns this dish from something really nice to something awesome.